Today's podcast is being brought to you by the GSD Retreat. So the GSD Retreat is for badass business owners who want to get shit done beachside in Cabo, Mexico on December 2nd through 6th. This is an annual business strategy and content planning retreat. So I want to invite you guys to come and join me and several other amazing speakers in a spectacular oceanfront bedroom villa for an intimate business retreat where you will experience not only fun and friendship, but we want to get shit done for 2019. And so I want to ask you, do you actually block time on your calendar to work on on your business to plan for consistent content and for consistent marketing each month. But you know, something always comes up. So again, I want to invite you to come to spend three full days with me collaborating with like-minded business individuals looking to get this done, to knock it out. I will show you exactly how to put together an annual plan with content creation, images, weekly schedule, and so much more. You will leave Cabo with a solid plan to crush 2019. So if you're interested, I want to invite you to visit BIT dot ly slash gsd retreat again it's december 2nd through 6th in cabo mexico sign up today seating is limited we only have a certain amount of rooms so it is limited if you want to start 2019 with a plan and a bang and you don't have to worry about a marketing strategy Come spend three days with me in Cabo where you will leave with an amazing, amazing plan where you can fast track your personal and professional goals, leaving you with the return on investment of being absolutely priceless. So visit bit.ly slash GSD retreat. Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Prophet. Hi, y'all. It's Angela Prophet, your event and productivity therapist, coming to you from the heart of Music City in Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled, professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the event industry, what we have learned from them, and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Hi, y'all. It's Angela Prophet. Thank you so, so much for joining us today on Weddings Unveiled. I'm so excited to be talking with Sarah Mongolis. She is the CEO and co-founder of Honey Fund. Sarah, thank you so, so much for being on. Welcome. Thank you, Angela. I'm so happy to be here. Yay! I loved that we connected because I've known about Honey Fun and actually have clients who have used it before and they're like, what is it? And they're like, but is is that traditional? Like, is that okay? And I'm like, yeah. you hired an untraditional wedding planner. Like, of course it's cool. <laughs> of course it's fun. But tell our listeners a little bit about your background. Yeah. So I started out actually as a music major in college. I had not a lot of vision of what I wanted to be when I grew up. And I, I loved music. So I went with that. And then I kind of fell into marketing, just, you know, working jobs as I got out of college. And I really liked it. I had an interest in psychology and, you know, both my parents are CPAs. So I was really good with numbers and just kind of married all my, all my background together. So I did digital marketing when, you know, during the dot-com boom in the 2000s and worked for a private university that ended up giving me my MBA in marketing. And when I met my husband, Josh, in 2003, and we decided to get married, we kind of built our own wedding website. You know, he was a software engineer. We just didn't find a honeymoon registry we liked out there. So we built our own. 
That's amazing. It's so <laughs> funny. I'm not kidding. Every single person that I talk to on this podcast, it's like, how'd you get into this? And it's either like, well, it was an accident. Like my friends were helping, asking me to help. And then, right. and then we just didn't find anything that we like. So we just did it ourselves. <laughs> yep. That's exactly it. So I love that. And so like my next question for you was like, how'd you get into the industry? But we kind of already... I, I mean, got married. That's yeah. how I got in. <laughs> yeah. And you said it wasn't intentional. It's not like you sat down and wrote this business plan. I mean, yep. Yep. it sounds like you saw a need and you like jumped on it. Yeah. And you know what was really interesting about, you know, a lot of my expertise in the wedding industry comes from not only my own wedding, but of course, you know, going to lots of weddings, meeting lots of people in the industry and working in this industry for so many years. But it all started with Martha Stewart's wedding planner. So I always give her the credit. Really? Yeah. For, for teaching me everything I needed to know about planning a wedding. And really her, her you know, three ring binder organizer back from the early 2000s, it was really, it had everything you needed to plan a wedding on any budget, which was just amazing. And then just maybe four years later when, when Honey Fun was a couple years old, we got featured on her homepage as Darcy's wedding idea of the day. And it was such an amazing full circle moment that we were like, oh my God. And it was, that, again, that was a total accident too. That's so neat. Don't like those kinds of stories give me goosebumps. <laughs> was pretty, we were pretty happy that day. That's awesome. How long has Honey Fun been around now? I feel like, I've, I mean, I feel like it's been out for a little bit. Oh yeah. We launched Honey Fun in March of 2006. Okay. So it's been around for a while. Yep. We're about just as old as Twitter. <laughs> wow. And, uh, yeah. And we, you know, it was about in a year after our own wedding that we launched the site that other people could use. That's amazing. Like, what would you say? Well, I'm sure there's always competition out there, right? And so I bet when you first started, there wasn't anything like it. And so now that, I mean, it just, I feel like every year weddings just grow. It's like, there's more and more and more people yeah. on the earth like getting married, which is great for our business. But is there something that is special or unique about Honey Fun and how you guys do it that is going to be different from any other website? Yeah, for sure. I mean, number one, just because we have 12 years experience, we're really good about, you know, making it easy to raise money, having the lowest fees and getting you your money as quickly as possible. So that's always been our key focus. Secondly, we recently came out with a zero fee option and this is oh. completely groundbreaking in crowdfunding in general, as well as honeymoon giving and cash giving. So couples can now accumulate funds in their honey fund and then redeem them for digital gift card partners. And we have dozens of partners, including a booking app called Sky Hour that lets you book airfare with over 350 airlines. So really, you can take this money and do anything you want with it. And there's zero fees to you, zero fees to your guests, and get a great honeymoon out of it. That is amazing. So it's partners or like affiliates that you guys partner with to keep those fees down? Yeah. So the gift card, the digital gift cards are available to us at a little discount. So that's how we can cover the fees that we pay on the credit card processing. That is amazing. I feel like business owners, when I'm like talking to people about productivity and fees and commissions, and it's like, people are so afraid sometimes in our industry to like talk about money, like on the business side yeah. of like mm -hmm. how many pro, yeah, sure. There's always cons. It's like, oh, we don't take credit cards because the fees I'm like, really? Like right. you're really missing out. Like there's a lot yeah. of options out there and you got to spend right. a little money, a little bit of money to make a little bit of money. And so yep, for sure. And then you don't want to put any of that on your customer. You just let your customer right. have the easiest path to success and everything else works itself out. Right. And so like you said, having experience and been in the space for a little bit, you've leveraged those relationships and then you, the client really, really benefits from that. Yeah, for sure. And, and we've just had so much time to be creative about how to, how to run the business and how to bring the customer the most value that we can while still keeping the lights on. I love it that your focus is the client because I feel like in this industry, we all start out that way. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then going into 16 years, it's like, okay, I, my number one focus is definitely the client, but you still have right. to run a business and be yeah. a business. Yeah. And that disconnect sometimes with emotional money spending doesn't translate over into the business. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's true. My husband is my co-founder and he is our CTO and we just kind of put him in temporarily into like a product owner role where he is going to 
to be spending a lot of time with prospective customers and really advocating for the right thing for the customer so that we can continue and improve the service. It's really, really exciting to see that shift because like you said, sometimes as founders, you can get a little far away from that trying to run the business side and we need to be talking to our customers directly really to, to be guiding us in the right direction. Absolutely. 100%. And I feel like the more of us that like pull together and say like, you can be a successful business, but also have the client in mind first, get ahead. And Mm -hmm. it takes a strong group of professionals to like work together for that goal, but Mm -hmm. never lose sight. So I love that. That's awesome. (laughs) What would you say like the number one thing that like your clients love about you? I mean, I kind of already know, but just for our (laughs) For our audience who isn't up with like what you guys do, like yeah. what do they love? Well, the number one feedback we've received over 12 years is from wedding guests. And they always say in almost the exact same words, this is so cool. I wish I had this when I got married. Yep. And what they're talking about is the fun of giving an experience and the fun of shopping for activities like swimming with dolphins or a candlelit dinner on the beach versus sheets and towels and toasters. Mm-hmm. So we really have attributed our success to the wedding guest and the enthusiasm with which you know people come to Honey Fun and, and just enjoy giving something totally fun and different. Well, and also too, I feel like, and again, I feel like you and I can both say this because it's been well over 10 years, but at the older I get, the older my couples get and they already live together and they yeah. make sure that they can live together before they like jump and say, okay, we're getting married, but they already have right. everything, but they want right. to take, I feel like also, even though they're older, they value quality of experience and the travel mm-hmm. and the honeymoon, they really do splurge because, you know, some of my, most of my couples, like they are older and they're like, okay, if we want to have kids, we're going to start having kids. I mean, they tell me all kinds of things that I don't even ask sometimes. (laughs) (laughs) I bet. And then, you know, they really want to do something nice. And so that's why I, I just think it's such a phenomenal idea for what you guys did. I mean, kudos to you. It's just amazing. So it was, like us, I said, it was born out of our own necessities. So. Yes, which I love because you like, again, saw a need, jumped and did it. So tell me about your association with Shark Tank. Oh yeah, this is kind of a fun story. So somebody in the Shark Tank world had, had been invited to a wedding where Honey Fun was on the registry and they gave a gift and they recommended us to casting. And so casting called us up and they said, or they emailed us cold and said, hey, we're, you know considering, you know, next we're casting for next season of Shark Tank. We wanted to invite you guys to uh, consider coming on the show. And I had never seen Shark Tank. I'm not a huge fan of reality TV, to be honest. I'm not a real housewives person. Um, <laughs> Me either. You know, could, I stomached a little bit of like the real world back in the 90s, but I pretty much stopped watching TV after I started a business and had two kids. So, you know, I just, my first gut response was no way would I do mm-hmm. it. And then, of course, you know, we looked into it and we talked to people we know in business about the show and and it turned out to be like an incredible opportunity to put our brand in front of 7 million viewers. Yeah. And potentially even get some money out of it to grow the company. So what we did is we applied for the show, got accepted, and we filmed it about six months later and it aired four months after that. How do you think like your perception of what, like, again, you were like, no way, Right. And then you did it. What do you think is like your top takeaway for like, mm. oh, I'm so glad we did that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we got an investment with Kevin O'Leary and I love that him. absolutely is the number one, you know, key amazing thing that came out of it aside from obviously the, the brand exposure um, on primetime television. That's amazing. Yeah. Kevin has been a really great partner to us. He's opened doors for us. He's, you know, been very generous with his media prowess and getting us back on Shark Tank and on follow-up shows and, and other TV that he does. He continues to educate, you know, us. He connects us all together under his portfolio. So we have new friends and new community in the entrepreneur space that we can rely on. And it's just been a really amazing, unexpected gift along the journey of Honey Fund. That's amazing. I've just recently started working with a lady named Kim that heads up like all this social media and Facebook and how she really got well known and how I learned about her was through an entrepreneur group with Kevin O'Leary. So ah, is it Kim Scott Phillips? What's her name? Kim Phillips? Her last name is her group. Um, it's like Powerhouse Professionals. 
is oh, okay. Kim. Might be different, Kim. And like, I'm new to the group. And so I don't know everybody's name. Kim and Mike, like that's the two people that I've started to work with. But I know that she, her company has really worked closely with all the companies that he invests in Mm -hmm. on social media and Facebook ads and like just making sure that you're working smarter, not harder, and that you're not just throwing your money away and making sure that the return on investment, it's Kim Walsh Phillips. Yep. Yep. I met her um, through Kevin too. And she's absolutely amazing. Yes. Like I've learned so much from her and it's like, that's why I like, I typically go outside of our industry to learn about business. And then I bring it back over into our industry and try to help like other creative professionals, like really understand like, Hey, you're not really leveraging your business or working on it instead of in it the way you could. (laughs) Yeah. I love it. So that's awesome. And so this is like totally off script, but do you think that, well, I just think that uh, the perception out there in the world of weddings and TV is I don't know about you, but with me, it's like people think in the wedding industry, uh, professionals and brides, like if you get on TV, it's like you just have a free ride. And Um, so if you could talk a little bit to that, because I've been a part of a lot of different shows and it's still hard work and we still run a business and it's great for about a week and then a hot minute, people forget. Right. And, you know, again, it adds great credibility, but if you can kind of share your experience with like educating people we're business owners and right. it's still hard and we still have challenges. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. I mean, I think TV is can serve a very specific purchase uh, purpose, which is to fuel your marketing initiatives. So if you have a great, great product and when people come to your webpage, they convert to paying customers and TV is great because it sends people to your website. Yeah. Um, or it sends them to the store to buy your product. But you're, as you said, it's a temporary effect. Mm-hmm. So it's not like get on TV once and we're golden forever. It's like, we have to be really thoughtful about how we use that exposure, how we convert those eyeballs and that attention to paying customers that then go and refer us to more people. And so no matter where your brand ends up, whether it's TV or not, you want to make sure that you're able to convert that attention into the, you know, to a paying customer and serve them as best you can. And all of that takes thoughtfulness and planning and reinventing and testing and optimization and employees. And, you know, it, that never stops just because you get on TV. It may actually create right. some work, if anything. Right. Yeah. And I don't think people realize how sometimes it actually can create a shit storm. Like I recently <laughs> did a talk, like I'm just, I'm very like straightforward. Um, <laughs> I and I, I was at this wet tech conference and people, they were like, oh my God, you were recently on Pickler and Ben and da, 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 da. And I literally overheard someone say, that's that blonde girl that is like on TV and that's why she gets business. And it actually pissed me off. Oh, wow. And so I like later in the presentation when I was speaking, I'm like, you know, I overheard some people talking. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. Like, Who's going buddy out right now? And I said, but you guys, like it was a very young crowd and a very new crowd. And, and my talk was on leveraging if you are on TV or get asked to do something on TV, but there's no budget, like Mm -hmm. how the ROI, how the return on investment can really be great if you have a plan to leverage it in the appropriate way. And so the producer Pickler and Ben had, they were interviewing people that had been on the show. I was the last one before they re-upped the show because it was only Mm -hmm. a year old. And she Mm -hmm. said, you know, have you gotten any business out of it? Like, I know that it just aired. And I said, what do you mean? And she's like, well, like, has your phone been ringing since the episode? And I said, I don't, no one has ever contacted me saying, I saw you on TV. I want to hire you. Like people call and say they want to hire me because they saw a video of a design that I did. Or typically it's like I did their friend's wedding or I did their neighbor's wedding. Or I, it's always a word of mouth referral when you're doing it for 16 years. I've never had anyone said, oh, I saw you on a TV show. I want to hire you. Like, again, right. it's great credibility and it's great awareness, but that's not like, that's just 20% right. of it. Like I have to do the 80%. And she goes, yeah oh my God, can you come teach a class on that? Because no one, like, no one thinks like that. Like yeah, every single person. And like, you know, to be <laughs> honest, you can't fault them because for some types of products and services, mm-hmm. it does send them lots of, you know, business, mm-hmm. right? Like my friends at Wicked Good Cupcakes, the number one, you know, 
cupcake uh, just shipper in the country, they when every time they get on back on Shark Tank or um, their episode re airs, they get tons of new orders and that's real dollars to their pocket. But mm-hmm. for Honey Fund, it's not exactly like that because not everybody who watches is getting married. Mm-hmm. So only a certain percentage of the people watching are gonna. Um, be getting married or, or talk about it with someone who's getting married. And so in your case, because your wedding planner is very similar. So, you know, it, it depend. it really highly depends on the product or service, whether TV can be a good fuel for your fire. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, definitely if you have a product out there, I feel like if somebody, if you resonate with someone, like they're already married or whatever, and then their friend gets engaged or their daughter, their son, it's like, hey, I saw this thing on Shark Tank. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, how do you stand out and make it memorable with all the noise and all the competition and all the stuff that's going on out there? I mean, what are your, do you have any big challenges? Like, you know, obviously things have been going well for you guys um, in 10 plus years. Are there any challenges with the wedding industry that you guys face like on this technology ride? <laughs> oh boy. I mean, where do I start? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I wish I could just say, um, actually, no, we've solved all our challenges and it's just, you know, downhill from here. <laughs> That's it's never the case, never the case in business. Yes, of course. Um, the more popular Honey Fund is, the more popular, the more people that want to use it, the more competition comes into the market looking for, you know, a slice of the pie. So we definitely are always facing um, competitive pressure. Thankfully, we've deployed some really great strategies to combat that. For example, our partnership with Target so that couples can now register at Target and add Honey Fun items to their Target register. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, so we just, you know, we, we saw, you know, the challenges of bringing, continuing to bring more users and eyeballs to Honey Fun's website. So we put ourselves on another website that happens to be the 14th largest in the whole world or wow. in the country rather. <laughs> so, you know, you can get creative and you can, you can fight through these challenges. Um, but you always have to be, you, I, my number one feedback for business owners who face this kind of competitive pressure is you just got to believe in yourself. You just absolutely have to believe that you, if you're not serving that customer and someone else is, that customer is not getting the best they can get. And because of your commitment to that customer, you will make sure that they get on your site or on your service or they use you instead of someone else to plan their wedding. I love that. That is incredible about Target. I, I had no idea. I just got done listening to an audio book where they were referencing Target and their marketing program and how Target studies the habits of their buyers um, online as well as like if they go to the store and it is fascinating like what they do behind the scenes. It really is. They market. Like I just, I wanted to know more. And then, then this person on the book like went off on tangents, like telling stories about how, like what Target was doing and how good they were at like marketing to people. And one of the stories was this gentleman a dad got a postcard in the mail for a baby registry, like for cribs. And his daughter apparently was 15 years old. And he went up to the local target and was like, I need to speak to the manager. Little does he know this is like way above the local target, but he's like, you know, cussing them out. Like, why in the hell are you sending my 15 year old daughter baby registries when, you know, blah, blah, blah. And yep. they were so sorry, da, da 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 And then come to find out, guess what? The little yep. girl was pregnant. Yeah, I heard and that so, story. That's a good yeah. One. And so I'm like, so are the OBGYNs like selling the list? Is there, like, how is this even working? And so you just wonder like, what, where's your, where are they getting their data? But my God, they're so spot on. <laughs> well, I believe if I remember the story correctly, she had bought prenatal vitamins. Oh, gotcha. Or maybe your pregnancy test. Yep. But it's just like, okay, the fact that Target knew that you were pregnant before your family, like yeah. that's effed up, but whatever. Yeah. It's no, a great that's, market. That's the world we live in. <laughs> it, it sure is. But, you know, that's crazy. one example that went wrong, but Target is really, really good at, you know, what they call their customers, their guests. And yeah. They, really good at being in touch with what the needs are of their customer, their guest, And yeah. um, this is the reason why they called us um, to find out if we could power honeymoon giving because they saw their customers, their wedding couples going in this direction and they wanted to serve them in that way. Because like I said, if you're not serving your customer the best you can, somebody else is. So that, you know, I, I just have so much respect for them and the commitment to the guest satisfaction, um, which is what brought them to us. 
Oh my gosh, that is so amazing. It doesn't it feel good like when you're working so hard and somebody reaches out to you and it's like you're not knocking on their door. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> that been, we we've been and again, I can't stress it enough. I mean, most of the opportunities we've had have been just like that and all I can attribute it to is that we just wanted to provide a good service to people. Mm-hmm. And we just kept our eye on doing the best for our customers and, you know, everything else just fell into place based on that. But like you said earlier, it's not easy. (laughs) It's it's not always easy. Nothing's easy. Nothing's easy. I mean, do you have any, would you say that that's like, I was going to say like, what's the most latest, greatest, exciting new thing with Honey Fun? Like, would you say it's the target registry or are there other things out there that you want our listeners to know about? Yeah. I mean, well, I personally, one of my favorites is the Honey Fun gift card. So you can now give Honey Fun to anybody getting married, not just registered couples. And you just go to our website, honeyfun.com slash gift card and you know, put in however much money you want and the email address of your recipient and they get money towards their honeymoon. That's amazing. Do you ever think of venturing over into another market or do you right now it's like keep the eye on weddings and anything about like celebration of life or bar and bat mitzvahs or anything like that? Yeah, we actually launched a sister site called Plum Fund back in 2015. And so we have, um, you know, giving for all kinds of life events as well as hardships. And, um, you know, really that was born out of our customers asking us for, you know, can we use Honey Fund for the next stage of life? And we loved the idea. So we we built the site. So is it, how do you spell it? It's Plum Like the Fruit, P-L-U-M. That's amazing. Like I never realized how big the, the industry was for like, I hate to say the word funerals. That's why we like to say celebration of life. But in going through that process with some of my clients, and I mean, I was honored that they would call and say, Hey, like my grandma, my grandpa. I mean, we've even had siblings and parents and they, Mm. they said like, we want to celebrate um, their life. And so can you help us put together a party instead? We want this to be like a happy moment, not such a negative moment. Yeah. And then me personally going through it, um, my dad was sick for five years. And so we knew it was coming. Like, you know, it's, it's yeah. one cancer's bad. And so going through it, like very personally with my family, I was amazed at how the funeral market, like everyone talks about it will in our space. They're like, you play off of emotions and make money and da, da, da. And I'm like, well, it's not exactly like that. But I experienced firsthand how the funeral market really does play off your sadness and your emotions. And thank mm-hmm. goodness I had experience in emotional money spending because I'm like, no mama, we're not doing that. <laughs> like, uh, not no, but yeah, hell no. Yeah. And so That's it, smart. it almost, yeah. like, it made me research like what is out there to make this an easier process to like, you're already like sad and depressed. And even, I can't even imagine how families, how they face all of this stress with everything who aren't expecting it, like the unexpected. And so I'm so glad that I asked that. And that I know that because I had no idea that (laughs) everybody needs help. Um, you know, help when someone passes, even if it's been expected. It, there's just so much that you have to deal with that you don't can't anticipate. And um, and we really do see a lot of people come around, friends and family in times of need with Plum Fund. Yeah, that's amazing. Congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do you have anything else special that you want to share with our listeners today? Or where can yeah. they find you? Like, yeah. Well, okay. So can I just talk about the Royal Wedding for like two minutes? Totally. Okay, good. <laughs> so I actually only caught the first part up, up to uh, when the gospel choir started singing Stand By Me. But that sermon really, oh. really hit home with me. And, um, you know, the power of love is something that I believe as a society we are losing touch with. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to your honeymoon and any travel you do together as a couple, what you're doing is you're investing in your relationship and you're investing in the love you share and giving it time and giving it wonder and joy. And that's what I think is one of the main factors fueling the popularity of honeymoon registries. I mean, it's not just for the couple, but for the wedding guests to have a chance to help make that happen. You know, those people are literally investing in the love relationship of this couple for years to come. And it's just such a beautiful thing to be able to be part of that solution in a society where people have forgotten the 
importance of loving your neighbor. Amen. I love that. You're so right. So right. I haven't watched the whole thing. Like I was actually up (laughs) because we had a wedding that day. And so everyone's like, oh, you're up so early for the royal wedding. I'm like, well, actually I'm up for my (laughs) own wedding, (laughs) planning and executing. However, um, I probably still would have gotten up and, uh, you know, I haven't gotten through the whole thing yet, but I will say that I saw an interview recently um, with Megan. I, I didn't know anything about her. And she like opened her mouth and instantly like gained credibility with me. I'm like, yeah. wow, she's a really smart girl. She's a great leader and a feminist. And she yeah. was just saying so many wonderful things. And I'm like, wow, she, I think will follow the whole like royalty family and make them very proud. So yeah, I, I'm really just so encouraged to see a couple like them. It, it, it brings me back to Princess Diana and, and the values that she held and how vocal she was and how she was not afraid to go against, you know, the grain to do what was right. And we need more role models like that. And God bless her. Absolutely. I remember I was in college when she, the wreck happened and I was actually at a fraternity house. Oh, I mean, I remember I was in college, college too, girl. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. But I, I'm just like at a young age, I'm like, why would God take someone's life that's so um, amazing, like a good person and a good leader um, yep. for women? And it's like, I know everything happens for a reason and you never really know. But I know she's up in heaven, like smiling down, like on her boys and, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. knowing and loving that they really chose real women who share like real stories who aren't like this fake persona of like being perfect. So I love that. Yeah, yeah love exactly. She That's awesome. It's sure. awesome. Well, so what's the best way? Like would, would, should visitors visit your website or visit you on social? Like, yeah, well, so if, um, you know, anybody looking to, you know, have a honey fund or recommend honey fund can go to our website at honeyfund.com or download the app. Um, we're going to be running a big refer a friend campaign coming up here in the next couple of days where you can get a hundred dollar off hotels.com coupon for referring a friend to honey fund. So we'll make sure you have a link for that for your readers. Yeah. And of course our social media, we're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at honey fund, and people can follow me on my personal Twitter if they want to kind of understand my take on the industry or, um, you know, I, I'm really into life hacks and business hacks and women in business. So I share a lot of that kind of perspective on my Twitter. And yeah, I'd love to hear from your reader or your listeners rather. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, it's funny because I have learned in doing these like business things, it's like people either like to read or listen or watch. And it's crazy people learn and retain things differently. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's funny because our audience is so, it's like, you know, 30% love video, 30% love podcasts, 30% buy the books. And so we really try to um, not just keep it to like one thing, but to share the information for people to make sure that no matter if you love listening, reading, or watching, you're getting feedback on how you can better your business. So I love that. I love it. Well, thank you so, so much, Sarah, for taking time today to be on Weddings Unveiled. And I'm excited to continue our conversation. Mm. And again, everybody visit honeyfun.com and be watching for the for a friend. That is amazing that you're doing that. And Sarah, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Angela. It was really nice to meet you and talk to you. You're welcome. Have a great day, y'all. Thanks for listening. Bye. If you found this podcast helpful, please share it with other wedding and event professionals. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to tune in next week for more tips on how to grow your business. And if you have a question or an unresolved issue that you want guidance on, connect with us on AngelaProfit.com. For more valuable resources, again, visit the website. And until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to AngelaProfit.com.